the Holy Spirit. Amen. A soldier, an athlete, and a farmer walk into a bar. Now that sounds like the beginning of a promising joke, doesn't it? Unfortunately, I don't have a joke to go with it. All I have is a good first line. But how would you go about making up a joke to go with that line? I guess you would try to think of something that farmers and soldiers and athletes have in common. And what would that be? Well, they all kind of wear uniforms. Soldiers definitely wear a uniform. And athletes also generally wear uniforms. And farmers, well, there's no set uniform. But the farmers I know usually wear overalls and some kind of hat, maybe a baseball cap or a straw hat. So let's imagine the soldier and the athlete and the farmer walking into the bar wearing their usual duds. And the bartender looks at them and says, hey, what is this, Halloween? And not a very good joke, is it? Well, let's try to think of something else that farmers, soldiers, and athletes have in common. Hey, Hollywood makes movies about them. Think of all the great war movies, Black Hawk Down. Apocalypse Now, Saving Private Ryan, Heartbreak Ridge, Flags of Our Fathers, and all the rest. And then all the great athletic movies like Rocky, Chariots of Fire, Cinderella Man, Canute Rockney, All-American, Bang the Drum Slowly. And there have been a fair number of movies about farming, too, like The River, Country, Places in the Heart, Babe, The Astronaut Farmer, and hey, what about Field of Dreams? That's a twofer. That's about farming and athletes. So maybe that is what would bond the soldier, the athlete, and the farmer together. Hollywood makes movies about them. So when the soldier, the athlete, and the farmer walk into the bar, the bartender says, movie stars, can I get your autograph? That's not very funny either, is it? This joke writing stuff is hard. St. Paul didn't tell a lot of jokes. St. Paul didn't kid around a lot. But he does tell us what the soldier and the athlete and the farmer had in common. Listen to what he writes in our lesson from 2 Timothy. No soldier gets entangled in civilian pursuits. Because his aim is to please the one who enlisted him. An athlete is not crowned unless he competes according to the rules. It is the hard-working farmer who ought to have the first share of the crops. So what's Paul telling us about these three jobs? What I hear him saying basically is this. The soldier, the athlete, and the farmer all have jobs that embrace their whole life, their entire being. They don't just work nine to five. They don't punch a time clock. Rather, what they do encompasses all of their lives. I think of the jobs that, that I've had in my life. First job I ever had was as an admissions clerk, an admissions clerk at Brook Army Medical Center Fort Sam Houston in San Antonio, my hometown. And I would go to work at the, at the Army Hospital. I would put in my eight hours admitting people to the hospital, and then I was done. I went home, and the rest of the day was mine. Then later, I worked as a clerk typist uh, one summer for a mortgage company, typing closing papers, and uh, another, uh, another summer for the city water board. And again, I put in my eight hours, I went home, and I was finished. I did not have to think about mortgages until the next morning. I did not have to think about plastic water pipes that were defective and burst until the next morning. And after I graduated from college, I got a job writing public relations for the school that I had attended. And again, I left the office at 5, and I did not think about public relations again until the next morning at 8. I think of my dad, too. He drove a delivery truck for the Pearl Brewing Company. It wasn't one of their regular delivery trucks. 
His truck was the hot shot truck. It was the emergency delivery truck. If somebody ran out of product, the hot shot truck would quickly take it to them. So he drove the hot shot truck eight hours a day. He clocked out. He came home. He was done. But it's not like that for soldiers or, or uh, farmers or athletes. Their jobs reach beyond that eight-hour day. Actually, peacetime soldiering sometimes does resemble having a regular job. I mean, the guys I worked with at the Army Hospital, they lived off the base. They, they came in, they did their work, they went home. It was kind of like having a regular job, even for the, for the soldiers there. But in wartime, in wartime, it is very different. In wartime, soldiering claims your entire existence. There are no time clocks on the battlefield. In those circumstances, soldiering becomes a 24-hour-a-day occupation with continual vigilance. And how about the athlete? The athlete usually has a training regimen that involves certain food, getting plenty of rest, continually conditioning his or her body, continually practicing his or her craft, Again, not a job with a time clock. And how about the farmer? I used to live in a farming community. I remember a farmer telling me, you know, nobody does this work unless they really, really love the lifestyle. So for him, farming wasn't even a job. It was like a whole lifestyle. It was a whole mode of existence. It was something that claimed his whole being. A few years ago, the country of France trying to impose a 35-hour limit on the work week. No Frenchman would ever work more than 35 hours a week. But when they tried to apply that to farming, they ran into a brick wall. Because at 35 hours, a farmer is just getting started. Again, it's a job that encompasses your whole life, your whole existence. And Paul is telling Timothy, and really telling us to, be like a soldier in your Christian life. Be like an athlete in your Christian life. Be like a farmer in your Christian life. He's telling us being a Christian is something that embraces your whole existence. Being a Christian is not something you do once a week or a couple of hours a week. Every moment of our lives is to be marked by our faith. And how do we, how do, we do that? Well, one thing is to think about the, God, the things of God. Think about the things of God frequently. Throughout the day, we want to remember that we are made in God's image for a personal relationship with Him. That God has loved us with a deep personal love. That He has purchased us and made us His own through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. That He promises to be with us always. That He's always watching us and watching over us. We want to carry the continual remembrance of these holy things in our minds and our hearts. And that is one way that we let faith encompass our entire lives. And we also want to pray frequently. They don't have to be long, drawn-out prayers like the ones I do at the altar. Just short arrow prayers. You're familiar with the idea of the arrow prayer? Quick prayer that you shoot heavenward, like, Jesus help me, or Lord have mercy on me, or bless me, holy Jesus. Quick, short prayer. But we, we want to keep a continual conversation going with God. Pray without ceasing, St. Paul tells us in 1 Thessalonians. Our, our Eastern Orthodox friends, the Russians, the Greeks, the Syrians, they have something called the Jesus Prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy upon me, a sinner. And for, for a lot of them, they say this prayer again and again until it kind of becomes part of the rhythm of their lives, the rhythm of their faith. But, but however we do it, however we do it, we want to stay in touch with God continually, keeping a constant dialogue with God is another way we can let our faith embrace our whole life. And in every situation, I want to remember that I belong to Christ. Jesus has made me His own, not just one day a week, not just eight hours a day, but at every moment. So when I'm tempted to be rude, I want to be considered. 
consider it instead because I belong to Jesus. When I'm tempted to be selfish, I want to be generous instead because I belong to Jesus. When I'm tempted to lash out in anger, I want to seek rational conversation. Rational conversation instead because I belong to Jesus. I want my attitudes and my actions to be shaped and molded by my faith. Molded by the holy love that has embraced me in Jesus Christ. And that is how we can be like the soldier, like the athlete, like the farmer, whose vocation embraces their entire lives. <coughs> we can be like them by remembering that we belong to Jesus. And certainly we don't want our faith to be confined to this one hour on, on Saturday night or Sunday morning. All right, sometimes it's a little longer than an hour, but you get what I mean. <laughs> Because this is the time when our faith gets recharged and renewed. This is the time when God equips us for another week of living with Him. But it doesn't end here. It doesn't end here. This, this hour, this hour and a quarter is just the beginning. Every moment in the coming week is a moment when we belong to Jesus. We're not just punching in at 6.30 p.m. or 9.30 a.m. or 11 a.m. and then punching out an hour or so later and that's it, done for the week. Don't have to think about Jesus for a while anymore. No. No, in our faith life, we're like farmers and soldiers and athletes. It's a task that encompasses our whole lives. I think of Jesus. He had a mission. He had a mission to live and die for us, to live a perfect life under God's law, and to die a perfect death bearing our sins. And his whole life was that mission. His whole life was taken up in the great task of living and dying for us so that we can belong to God forever. I'm not Jesus, not by a long shot. And you aren't Jesus either. And yet, like him, we have a mission to live our lives to God's glory. A mission that embraces our whole life. Just like his mission embraced his whole life, our mission embraces our whole life. To live for God. And that's why Paul tells us to be like, like a farmer, or a soldier, or an athlete. So what's our joke going to be now, now that we know that soldiering and athletics and farming are things that embrace one's whole life? Before I tell you my final joke, which is still kind of lame, <laughs> let me tell you the punchline to that joke that one of our members gave me last night that I thought was quite funny, even though it doesn't really go with the sermon, but I still thought it was funny. Soldier and an athlete and a farmer walk into a bar. And the bartender says, where's the rest of the group? And they say, what do you mean the rest of the group? The bartender says, you know, the cowboy, the Indian, the cop, the construction worker, YMCA. Now that's funny. That's funny. Um, but my joke is not so funny, but it makes the point. A soldier, an athlete, and a farmer walk into a bar. And the bartender says, hey, what are you guys doing here? Get back to work. It's still not very funny, but it makes the point. Being a soldier, an athlete, a farmer, that's not just a job. It's a life. And being a Christian, being a Christian, that's a life too. A wondrous life. Life in the crucified and risen Jesus. Glory to him now and always. Amen. And may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in Christ to life everlasting. Amen.